Welcome in another episode of Bourbon and Buddy with myself, Shane Reardon, and today, Coach Dave Wanstead. I, I am ready to go. Good. Anything you want me to do? I'm Good. No, I want you to put that on because I don't want to get your TV clothes dirty. I'm going to stay out of the way till you tell me. Yeah, so what's what, going we, on? Yeah. what we learned about Dave is he really enjoys a, a well done steak, right? We went to Boulevard Steakhouse and Dave ordered a well done T bone. I think it was a T bone, right? Yeah. T bone with ketchup on it. No, so, no, no, ketchup on the side. Ketchup on the side, but they put ketchup on it. An order so disrespectful to a steakhouse chef that the chef came out of the kitchen to see what the hell Dave wants that was doing. And so it's, it's not the first time the chef has done that to me. I'm no, from Pittsburgh. That, 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 not the first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these beautiful Second City Prime steaks uh, that I was given by mm. Second City Prime. Dave's had some, I think. Absolutely. We've got a New York strip. We've got a filet and we have a skirt steak. So what we're gonna start with, Dave, okay. is the strip and the filet on the cast iron, and then when we're almost done, you can leave that there okay. for right now, we're fine. We're gonna do the skirt on the fire. So, the pan's been hot already. So for those of you who make steak at home, make sure your cast iron pan has been heating up at the highest heat for about 10 minutes, right? Then to give it a little bit of a kickstart, we're gonna go in with some canola oil, which Dave, yep. I'm sure you have at home. Absolutely. Just to help the crust a little bit. Any neutral oil, has high smoke points, so canola, vegetable, grapeseed, flaxseed, anything like that. So we'll start with the strip. It's gonna be very smoky, so I hope you have a good exhaust fan. The strip has this fat cap, Dave, right here, right? So we wanna sear off as much of that fat cap as possible before we do anything else. So we're going with that. Hold it down for a little bit. Let that fat sear off. Dave, what is your favorite cut of steak? You know what, it's, it's, it's probably, Going in, I just had a, uh, last week I was in Naples and just had a, uh, a bone-in New York strip, you know? Okay. That would probably be it. I like to bone-in a little bit. Uh, Is that what you guys would eat when you were coaching? Was it, was it always steakhouses or was it something else? No, it, 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 filet or, you know, cowboy steak in Dallas. Sure. You know? Filet goes in right now. And it's not my favorite cut of meat, but if you don't like fatty meat and you like a, a tender piece of meat, but not a lot of fat. Filet is fine for you. It's not fine for me, but for this purpose, we're gonna we're gonna do wide ranging cuts. What's a Pittsburgh cut, Dave? Or, or doing a steak Pittsburgh style? Because you almost burn, asked for burn that. Burn on the butter. burn on the outside, yeah. medium in the middle. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We're trying to get these as hot as possible on the outside, and it should take. I don't know, about, for this thickness, this is pretty thick, about yeah. an inch, inch and a half, maybe great, great two and a half minutes, three, three minutes per side. So we'll let that sit for a little while. The most important thing, Dave, about cooking a steak, right, is the resting period. So we'll cook this, and then we like to rest it out of the pan when it's done for as long as you cooked it, or 10 minutes. Oh, really? So we're gonna, oh, we're gonna go with 10 minutes. That's a mistake that I make. I, you I'm, make that I'm, mistake. I'm eating it. Oh, you can't do that. You gotta let the juices redistribute. And the most important thing, once you put that steak down in a pan, yep. you don't touch it until it's ready. Oh, no flipping. Yeah, yeah. Two mistakes I made. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I'm gonna leave it for a little while. And I've turned the grill on right here for the skirt. Because it's gonna go a lot quicker, it's very thin, and I want that I want that fire flavor on a, on a nicely marbled skirt steak. What are you doing with all this stuff here? That's gonna be for the mashed potatoes. So, oh, okay. when we flip these, we're gonna put some butter in the pan, put some thyme in the pan for a little bit of aromatics, yep. and then we baste the top of the steak, right? Oh man. Yeah, this is, it's a professional lineup here, Dave. There's no question. Yeah. So it's okay every once in a while, you don't wanna pick the whole thing up, but if we wanna take a peek and see what see what it's doing, oh, I like that. How long before you flip them? Uh, for these, I'm gonna say like two and a half to three minutes. Yeah. And now, I'm gonna go on with some of the butter, a whole stick. Oh, we smoke up a lot right now. And then some thyme. Get a sizzle. I'm gonna take this spoon. I'm gonna come around here and wait for that butter to melt a little bit. And then Dave, we just tilt the pan, move these a little bit, and then just start basting the butter over the top of the steaks. How about that, huh? That's where that extra flavor comes from. That's where the extra flavor comes from. You wanna, like you're basting a turkey on Thanksgiving when you're sticking that that sucker inside the, the turkey pan to base those juices. At this point, I'm gonna bring the heat down a little bit. 
we'll just kind of let these finish yep. on their own, right? Check it every once in a while. Now, I like to do the finger test for the dumbest of steaks. Now, I know you like it well done, but we're not going to let you. Medium well. Medium we're not going to well. let you eat it like that today. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put the skirt on. Let that go. So, the finger test for steaks, Dave. Yeah. I'm going to touch these, and I'm looking for the doneness. I'll do it this way. So, if you have your hand like this, right? Yep. If you touch your pointer finger to your thumb, yep. the toughness right there is what rare would be. If you touch your middle finger to your thumb, medium rare, medium well, well done. Whoa. So, I'm trying to match what it feels like to touch my pointer finger to the, my thumb. I'm yep. trying to match that here. That's still super rare. Yeah. This strip will go quicker than the filet, but they're both still pretty rare. Awesome. What are your favorite Pittsburgh food memories? You grew up in Pittsburgh. Oh, God. Well, Manny Brothers? I was back here two weeks ago and I had fried zucchini, okay. fried mushroom, Ooh. a fried fish sandwich at Walleye's, okay. and some mac and cheese. That sounds good. That, that's what I had. Uh, that's a coal miner's meal right there. Yeah, huh? it is. Pomani Brothers is legendary. What does uh, what does Jan cook for you at home? You know what? We um, she does a great job. I mean, we mix it up between you know, chicken, seafood, obviously meat. I mean, sure. can't can't beat some good ground meat in a burger, right? Of course not. That's what we did last time, right? Yep. We do burgers. Oh. Still super rare there. Still about medium rare there. Pick the heat up a little bit. How long with the? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna eyeball it. Like it's gonna go pretty quickly, but I'm I'm hoping it'll be done by the time the peas are done because we yep. put it on after. I'm not necessarily looking for a heavy char on this because there's just so much fat in there. The longer you leave that skirt stayed on, just because it's so thin, the more fat's gonna come out. Since mm. it's not in the pan, I'm just losing all that fat down into the grill. Pan out, get ready here. And then we'll do potatoes too when these steaks are rested. Because why the hell not? You're gonna rest the steak as long as it's cooked to cook. That's that's the goal, yeah. Or about 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Who are the bears taking number one overall, Dave? Or are they trading that pick? It's gonna be, you know what? Oh, they're definitely gonna trade the pick. They'll trade the pit. Okay. And, and odds would be, you know, depending on how far you get down. I mean, uh, uh, if, if they would end up trading out of the top ten, you could see them taking a uh, an offensive lineman. You know, sure. the offensive lineman never traditionally, before they had the rookie salary cap, you never drafted an offensive lineman high because no one wanted to pay him. Right. Now they've got the rookie cap. And you'll see offensive linemen get drafted in the top ten all the time. Who do you think between Danny and Speeds is going to be most critical of these stakes? Well, Danny doesn't have any idea what we're eating. No. Speeds, no Speeds is, he'll be the connoisseur on the, on, the, on the food. All right, we're going to take that strip out. I think that's about done. Oh, man, huh? Yeah, I like that color real good. Get in there real close, Kevin. Wow. We're proud of that color, I think. Look at that thing. So if these filet is a little thicker, it doesn't hurt. Uh, something like this, if I had more time, I probably would have reverse seared it, which Dave is like, you put it in the oven at a low temperature until it gets up to mm. like 20 degrees less than what you want it to finish at. Gotcha. So if I want that medium rare, I would have put it in the oven until like 110 and then seared it on the cast iron until about 130. Gosh, it's gonna be real good, I think. When, you, when you're at home in Naples, you, you, don't cook, you don't cook on the side for restaurants or anything? No. How's your catering service doing? I know you got a catering service. Right? I kind of stopped doing that. Did you? Yeah, I kind of stopped doing it. I, I wasn't seeing the profits because it was through a, a, a third party app. So maybe I'll start doing it on my own uh, this baseball season and, and see what we can do. But what do you remember? Um, what do you remember your mom cooking for you when you were growing up? Well. We had six kids. Uh, I was the oldest. Yep. I would say a lot of pasta. Yeah. Uh, a lot of chicken. 
meatloaf because she can make it big enough for all six of us. Sure. They were probably the, the three go-tos. Okay. Another good, uh, my mom used to make mashed potatoes all the time. Oh goes, yeah, oh yeah, far, right? my old mashed. So what I did before you got here. What are you gonna mash those with? You so mash it's, it's kind of funny that you, that you asked that because when we were prepping before, I was looking around in these drawers and there was no masher. So I found oh. this fork and go. I'm going to bend it a little bit yep. and then I'm just gonna use that as a masher. Oh. Super human strength. So what we're gonna go in first with, I'm just gonna bring this over. Here. Is this garlic? Yeah, so that is for the steak. It's, it's, it's somewhat in with the steak, but it's for the for the potatoes. So what that is is confit garlic. Do you know what confit garlic is? No. So it's you take a bunch of garlic, you cover it with olive oil in a pot or something like that. You put it in the oven at a real low temperature and you cook it in itself. So oh. it's garlic cooked Ooh. in oil, and then you get this beautiful garlic oil, and you get these like these little garlic cloves that I mashed up there. So, we're going with that first. This is that comfy garlic all minced up. Turn the heat on a little bit to get this warmed up again. We're gonna go in with a whole thing of butter. Use the good Kerrygold butter. It's worth it, I promise. Huh. Whole thing. You can tell the difference, huh? You can, you can really tell the difference. Whole thing. In there. And then we're gonna go in with some sour cream. Oh, then we're gonna mash it up. Yeah. Yep. Sour cream, mash it up. I should have brought more than one spoon. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Are you used to having like regular cream in your no. mashed potatoes? No. I, I, no. If I need anything with, yeah. It'd be cream. She'll put that in. Now you're saying it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see what this mash does for me. This is gonna be. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a task. Yeah. No. We need something else. We need something else, Dave. Okay. We're gonna get here. Be a rolling pin. Like a like a cocktail oh, muddler, oh, right? There you go. There you go. Another idea for our viewers, right there. Look at that. <laughs> rolling pins. If you don't have a potato masher. Go ahead and muddle your potato cocktail. Doing the job. It is doing the job. It's doing the great. I really just want to get all these potatoes crushed up and then yep. you can incorporate it a little bit. Now this does seem like a lot of butter and a lot of sour cream, and I know it is, but a potato, a mashed potato, is not a health concept. Like you're not eating and making mashed potatoes because you want to drop weight. You're eating and making mashed potatoes because the mashed potatoes are fucking awesome. <laughs> and you can't have steak without a mashed potato. Man, look at those steaks. It's starting to, the juice is starting to run out of it. And see, so I never, I never get when that. you cut it, all those juices are flowing out when you cut it too early. I would normally be halfway done with my steak and this all. See? Yep. This is actually working really well. Yeah. Couple big chunks left here, then we are good. Where's that little plastic spoon? Plastic spoon? Oh, wait, is that the spoon you use? Yeah, that's the spoon. I'm going to sample. I'm going to put some salt and pepper there first, and then you can sample it. Okay, we're good there. Let me season it, and then I'll have you taste test. Start with a little less, and then work your way up. What is that you're putting in? Pepper? Uh, fresh cracked, cracked black pepper. Mm -hmm. Put some Parmesan cheese in there too. Man. And go easy on the salt if you're putting Parm in there because Parm is, well, I'll go this way. Parm is naturally salty, so you don't want to go too crazy on the parm, as you know, Dave. Yep. The rolling pin worked. And that roll worked great as a masher, huh? Mm. All right, we'll give it a taste and then 
just for seasoning. Let me get you a spoon. Here, I got one right here. You want to use that? Yep. All right, here we go. A little taste. Oh. Is that good? Did we nail it? Wow. Yeah. Let's see. Mmm. Garlic, it's a little sour cream, a little bit. That's of a good potato. That's, out, out That's a really good potato. All right, so we've been resting for about 10 minutes now. This is the color we're looking for. A little char on both sides. Now, I'm gonna cut on an angle, Dave. So you're kind of going with the, the grain of the fat. Oh, wow, look at that. Huh? You got a perfect medium rare there. All right, let's line this one up real quick. Cut the filet. I'd hate to eat that, you know? Yeah, I would hate to eat that. You're right. It looks so good. Oh, yeah. Perfect rare. Oh. Line that up right there. And now with the, with the strip, I mean with the skirt, Dave, it's different where the grains run this way mm -hmm. instead of that way. So we're gonna cut it into thirds stack it on top of each other, oh. and then turn it, cut it this way, so you're cutting against the grain. Bam. Perfect. Don't you love when it works out? Don't you love that? I hate to eat this. I would hate it too. It looks so good. So let's plate, and then let's get it into Danny and Speaks. Please, yeah. Here we go. So we'll give, oh. should be able to do, Three or four of each. Now we're gonna bring these guys to Matt and Danny in the studio, eat them right here in the four o'clock hour, Dave's normal hit on Thursdays. Thank you for watching Bourbon and a Buddy. I'm sure you'll see the follow-up footage of the guys criticizing my steaks with Dave actually enjoying it. But uh but Shane, what so how how was Dave as a as a sous chef? How, how did he do? Dave was an awesome sous chef. He yeah. was? He, he put his apron on. He was, he was very theatric about it. He started without the apron on, and then I introduced him, and he went off camera and grabbed an apron. Oh, good man. Yeah, he was great. That's... All right, so what do we got here? What do we got on the plate? All right, so left to right, if I remember correctly, you should have the New York Strip. And this is all Second City Prime stuff. You hear me talking about it every day. The, the New York Strip, about medium rare on the left side. Um, I think, Danny, you have the skirt in the middle. Everyone else has the filet in the middle and the skirt on the right. Mm. Ma'am, it should be like butter. It's this, been sitting for a little bit, but it should still be but tender like butter. The strip is unbelievable. You Delicious. To, you have to leave the meat sit when you take it off the grill. You do for as long as it uh, it took to cook. What right. if there's no grill? What if you make it in a pan the well, way Shane does? Same, in a cast iron. Same idea, right? We, yeah, yeah we did the the the, uh, the mm. skirt on the on the grill today. Mm -hmm. Oh man! So so that's what you learned, Dave. You learned you learned that you gotta let the let the meat sit. But my wife always says, "What are you doing?" Give me two minutes to finish dinner. I said, well, I took it off, you know, take it off the grill and I start eating. I mean. Shane, mm. I, don't, I don't know what you crusted the filet with, but it's killer. It, wow. I do a, a very, very coarse ground pepper and like a mortar and pestle. So mm. it's a little bit inconsistent. So yeah. you're getting some bigger peppercorns and then some smaller ones. Yeah. That's uh, that's phenomenal. I'm Mitch not is a big loving food. this segment, by the way. Mitch Everyone loves eating. when we eat on air. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we do it for him. I think he left, though. I think we're good. Yeah, he, he did. He's driving home and he's hearing us chew and he's thinking of a steak. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, and the listeners are probably thinking of steak too. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> yeah, steak popular uh, popular item in NFL circles. NFL guys like steak, Dave. <laughs> oh wow, good one. <laughs> that's smooth. We're we gonna open that bottle of red wine. Oh,